Hello and welcome. I am Matt Taylor and this is my variety channel. Today I'm going to be talking all about the game Elden Ring. Now I kind of held off playing this game right away. I saw trailers for it. I'm like that looks really cool. Fantasy aspect. I love fantasy. Fantasy role-playing games are like my favorite thing to play. Uh, but I held off and then I finally got it and played it. And so this is going to be a review of Elden Ring and I'm not going to have any major spoilers but it's also going to come from the standpoint of a non-Dark Souls player. I have never played any Dark Souls games. I haven't played any From Software games so I didn't know what to expect. And for those of you who have played this game you probably know what I'm going to be talking about. <laughs> but so I'm going to review the game, I'm going to talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, um, my recommendations for new players um, to make the game easier. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. So my gaming background, I have played lots and lots of games over the years, a lot of role-playing games. My favorite are role-playing games. I love games like The Witcher 2, The Witcher 3. Skyrim, probably one of my all-time favorite games of Skyrim, also Witcher 3, the Dragon Age games, just games of that nature. I love those games. I've put a lot of time into playing those games. Uh, but again, I mentioned I had never played any Dark Souls games before. So I love high fantasy. Now when it came to Elden Ring, I put in my time, over 150 hours for my first playthrough. I got to level one, 177 and I didn't skip any areas, not, none that I know of. There's probably some that I didn't find, but I did a pretty good job of trying to find and explore as much as I could to uncover as much as I could. Thank goodness for YouTube, because there's a lot of times when I got stuck, so I had to go onto YouTube and find what other players did to get past a certain dungeon, get past a certain predicament, or help like learn how to beat a boss, if that makes sense. And I will say, I've never had a look at so many videos, how-to videos, than I have for this game. So that gives you an idea of how difficult it was for me, okay? I know there's a, the experience, experience will be different for everyone, depends on your level of experience playing for the games. If you've played other From Software games, you'll probably have an easier time with Elden Ring, because I'm not gonna lie, this game is tough. It is hard. I told my friend that I was going to play play Elden Ring and he's like, good luck, that game is a little grindy. Little did I know, that little grindy was an understatement. It is a lot grindy. you got to just grind through it. you got to grind through areas, redo areas over and over again until you don't die. <laughs> and so I'm going to talk a little bit more about that as we go forward. So I definitely wasn't prepared for this game. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't have any experience with these games and so I just went in like eyes wide open gonna try to sink it all in and just jump right into it and I treated it at the beginning I treated it just like I would like Skyrim or The Witcher and that's the wrong, that, that was the wrong approach for this and so if you go into if you go into it thinking that way it's gonna be more difficult for you so Elden Ring is by far the hardest most difficult game I have ever played I died countless times over and over again. Died, died, died. You died. You died. You died. I fell off cliffs many times and died. I hit the wrong button, which made me fall off a cliff. Or maybe, like, instead of getting one potion, I drank a different one. So I exhausted one of my potions. And then when I was, I hit the wrong button. So instead of attacking with the sword or whatever, I tried to drink a potion and then the monster hit me and I died. So there are a lot of ways where you can kind of mess up and die. So um, there is that. And one of the more frustrating things is I've probably lost easily over 1 million runes or probably closer to 2 million runes. And for those of you who are not familiar with the game, runes, that is your, your money in the game that you used to buy Weapons, they use it to upgrade your weapons and, and things like that nature and to buy other, other things. But also you use that to upgrade your character. So that's your experience points as well. And so that's one thing I didn't like as much with Elden Ring is it wasn't separate between like gold 
um, and the experience they just have them combined and I think there's pros and cons to that approach um, it's not the biggest my most gripe with the game um, but there is just keep that in mind those things are combined and so yeah I probably I lost so many runes um, <laughs> playing in the game and uh, so that was a little bit frustrating so now let me get into the good, the bad, and the ugly, and then I'll sum it up with my advice for new players, or just players in general that are new to the world of Elden Ring. So the good. I love high fantasy, and this is definitely high fantasy. It uh, is a very good like storyline, um, and just the intricate details in the story, and how everything is connected is really, really cool. The genre, so it just fits my favorite type of genre. The landscapes, the um, just like the buildings and the dungeons and just everything is just superb, just looks stunning, is absolutely incredible. And then the vast world, the open world nature, and it's not just, a, it's a small, it's not a small open world, it is mega huge open world, so so much to explore. In fact, there is so much that you probably won't be able to see everything. If you are a completionist, um, I think even then you'll probably miss some things. Uh, and that's how big this world is. And that's just awesome. You can go wherever you want. You can do what you want. You don't, you're not stuck into one direction. Like you have to do this direction before you can get to the next one. I mean, there are some elements to that. Like you have to beat certain bosses before you can proceed to the next step. But getting up to that boss, there's so many ways that you can um, prepare to do that. So if you don't like open world, you're not gonna like this game, <laughs> okay? I love how you can configure the buttons on your controller to do exactly what you want them to do. Like if you don't like the standard way the controller is set up, like which button does like the strong attack, what does the fast attack, what does the jump, you can configure all those buttons to be exactly how you want to play. And I really like that. Not, a, not all games do that for you, so I really like that aspect. It has a very customizable character creation, so I like the character creator. You can get a pretty highly customized character. It doesn't matter too much, especially if you're wearing armor and uh, how much you're not going to really see your character on, on the inside anyway. But if you're one that likes to run around with like your shirt off and don't wear helmets and you just really like seeing your character, then you could totally make a character look really cool exactly how you want it, which is pretty awesome. And I will say that the game is very addicting, even though there's a lot of things I don't like about it and so much time wasted that I... It was just so many times that I had to be like, oh, why am I playing this game? This game is horrible. I hate this game. But I still kept coming back to it, kept playing it because I got addicted to it because it's very addicting. And so it's really fun. Um, really fun and aggravating at the same time, if that makes sense. Now let's move on to the bad. If you aren't paying attention in the game, it's really easy to miss things. So what I mean by that is, for example, early on I didn't realize that when you died, your runes are left where you die. Whatever runes that you haven't spent are left where you die. And then when you respawn or start again, you have to go over or you can go over and collect those runes. And so they're not lost forever. But on the way to those runes, if you die before you get there, they're gone completely. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that erases all the work that you did to build up those runes. And so that can be very frustrating if you don't know about that mechanic of rushing to get your runes before you die again. And early on I didn't realize that, so I lost a lot of runes that way. And I just died before I got there or I fell off a cliff before I got there. And <laughs> Uh, but for the most part you can get around if you get on your horse and just ride straight to your runes you can dodge enemies and get to your runes before you um, have to fight them again or you could just leave completely um, and I, I started to learn how to do that later on so I didn't lose as many but still it was very frustrating in the beginning because I didn't really know about that and I wasn't paying attention also when I first started early on talking to NPCs I didn't know you had to keep pressing the talk button to exhaust their dialogue. In other games like The Witcher and uh, like Skyrim, it's very, very um, self-explanatory. Like, like the dialogues, like it's hard to miss anything with dialogue with those games. 
Like it just takes you right through it. With, with this game, it's really easy if you're not paying attention, if you don't know what you're doing, to miss dialogue portions. And you have to play through all the dialogue and exhaust it before it will advance to the next phase for that first NPC's quest. Like if you go to an area where the NPC is supposed to be and they're not there yet, it means you probably have to go back and talk to them more and exhaust their dialogue. Also, something that I didn't know or realize is in order to advance, you have to rest or you have to quit, save the game and quit and then come back to it. And then that will also expand or restart that person's dialogue. So a lot of times I miss doing that right away. And then I went off and did other things and I completely forgot about the NPC. And so I didn't even know where to find them again. I forgot where to get them. Um, even though on the map, it does show a little tiny little icon which gives you the location of that person. So if you forget, you can just go around and look for those little things and, and just go back to that point. Fast travel back to that point and talk to that person to see if you missed something. So that's one thing that's nice is the fast, tra the fast travel element is there, which is good. Um, and you do that via the graces, the lost graces. You find these graces, you rest, and then you can fast travel between those. And you get a horse, which is awesome. Let you go ride really fast and also um, fighting on horseback. Sometimes it's easier for certain monsters and whatnot. So another part of the bad is the, I wish there were more cutscenes, more interactions with the NPCs. Um, probably because like in Skyrim and uh, The Witcher 3, there's a lot of cool dialogue and also Dragon Age where you just spend time with those NPCs and you really get to know them more and you really get to interact. And I granted, Elden Ring is not as NPC specific as those other games that I mentioned are. So if that's what you really like, like the NPC aspect, you may not like Elden Ring as much as far as the NPCs go. So now for the ugly part, is the side quests or the NPC quests, they're very, very hard to follow. You don't really know what to do next, or sometimes they'll make minor hints of where to go or what to do, but it's, they're really, really hard to follow. Um, unlike Skyrim and The Witcher 3, um, which they're pretty easy to, just to kind of follow the, the side quests and any other quests. And these are just really hard. But like I mentioned, there is a map marker where, so you can go back and find them if you get lost or you need a, a refresher. But there's no journal entries as far as everyone that you talk to and what the ne next step is for those people. There's no journal entries. You just have to kind of rem remember them. And I find that kind of, uh, that's one of the ugly points that I don't like really about the game. Also, the saving aspect is vastly different than The Witcher and Skyrim. You can't save it. Um, well, you can save it, but once you save it, it kicks you out of the game, and then you have to reload to go back in. But there's not like a long list of saves that you can choose from and reload. Like if you accidentally killed an NPC, that doesn't happen, does it? Oh my gosh, I killed two NPCs and or like early on accidentally like one creature came up to me and I swang but it didn't hit the creature it hit the NPC <laughs> and killed him mm -hmm. and then another time I ran up to a guy and he looked like he was evil and about and it looked like he was going to attack me but I just went and stabbed him without even trying to talk to him and that was another NPC but so you can't just like save like have a long list of 10 saves and just go back and pick one that happened like an hour before or half hour before and respawn from that point. It doesn't work that way, the saving function. You can save right before you do something important, um, but then once you proceed beyond that and you rest at like a grace or whatnot, that's gonna be a race, that save, if that makes sense. And so I find that, I found early on in the game before I got to used to it, I find that very frustrating and one of the ugly parts of this game. Yeah, another ugly part is these, cre a lot of the creatures are downright hard super duper hard to beat and it's like a grind trying to beat them with that said just like other games if you wander into a spot where you're really not supposed to be and your level is not up to the task then and you don't have enough like upgraded weapons it's going to be difficult that even happens with the witcher or skyrim at level one or two if you go try to fight a dragon you're probably going to die in any of those games but it's up to a next level in elden ring like even at my highest level, level 177, I was at the end of the game, it took me over four hours to beat the final boss. Now other people probably didn't have as hard a time as I did. If you've played the game through, you know exactly what boss I'm talking about. 
And it might have been easy for you. You're like, hey, that was easy for me. I beat him in my first try. Well, I didn't. <laughs> it took me a long time. And a couple other bosses were that way. And just normal random. They weren't even big bosses. They're just random creatures. And I thought I was pretty high level. And I just couldn't beat them. So that was very frustrating. And I have the mentality that if I meet something right away, I got to go, got to go kill it. I got to go fight it. So like when I first started the game at the the beginning part of this game, I was opened up to this new world and Limgrave was the, the first like continent or the first part of the, the place, uh, Limgrave. I'm like, okay, this is awesome. This looks really cool. Oh, there's this guy on a horseback down there. I'm gonna go fight this dude. This guy looks easy. Or yeah, he shouldn't be that too hard. Shouldn't be that hard. I'm right at the beginning of the game. Everything around here should be easy, right? And so I ran down there, boom, he killed me. Like two seconds, I'm dead. I'm like, ouch, I try to fight him again, boom. <laughs> I'm like, darn, that is crazy. And I'm like, well, well, let me wander on over here. Oh, there's this giant looking troll guy. I'm gonna go try to fight this guy. Again, this area is brand new. Early, early on the game, first area in the game, he should be easy. Or two hits, death. I'm like, ow. And so right away, I had a rude awakening to <laughs> the From Software game. I guess they're known for that kind of thing, putting really tough enemies right at the very beginning that you're supposed to avoid. You're not supposed to attack them. <laughs> uh, but it is satisfying once you level up to come back to those areas and straight up demolish those dudes that you had a hard time with early on. And uh, with these really tough ones, you have to learn their nuances. You have to learn the way that they swing and the tail, the tail that they have before they're gonna do something so you can dodge out of the way or jump out of the way or parry them or whatever. And for those of you who are really bad with the timing, that's going to be difficult for you and you may be very frustrated with that sort of thing. I'm not the best with timing. I usually like just to run up to people and button smash and hope that I beat them. <laughs> and you can't really do that with this game. When you get higher levels, you can go back to the earlier parts of the game and some of the easier creatures. You can def definitely just button mash them and be totally fine. Yeah, so that's kind of the, the good, the bad, the ugly. Overall, I still enjoy the game. I've, I put so much time into it. I wouldn't have put so much time into it if I didn't like the game. Um, fantasy aspect is just amazing. And you need, if you're gonna be starting new and you, you're just new to the game, you're new to, new to From Software games, new to Elder Ring, my advice would be you don't have to fight everything you see. In fact, sometimes it's just better just to go run past it, just go past it, pick up some loot on the ground, stray loot, go to the chests that are there, open up, get your stuff, and upgrade your guy before you start fighting things. Um, you can kill some easier things along the way, but it's better just to avoid them and then come back and beat them when you're higher level. And also make sure to pick up those runes <laughs> before you die, and that will help you level up quickly. And uh, like I said, it is a grindy game, but it's fun, it's addicting, the fantasy aspect, if you love that type of genre of high fantasy, I think you will enjoy it. Just be patient with it and start learning things. Don't be afraid to go onto YouTube and find some YouTube tutorials on how to beat things. Um, there's a really good YouTube series uh, walkthrough. There's like 80 or 81 episodes by this guy named Fighting Cowboy. And he just does an excellent job. I recommend at least watching his first couple, first two or three, four um, walkthroughs episodes. Um, and that will get you really started with your character. And then after that, you should be golden with this game. And you can keep following on his walkthroughs if you want, or just kind of explore on your own. Still addicted to the game. I'm playing through it again. And I am, it's, it's so much easier the second playthrough. Less time is wasted now. I'm not losing any of my runes. I've died way less times. I've probably only died. I played a couple hours and I've only died like once or twice so far, which is awesome. If you go into a dungeon and the dungeon's way too hard, just leave it and come back to it later uh, when you're higher level and uh, you'll, you'll do uh, a lot better. Also, make sure to keep track of your equip load. Um, if, you're, if you have a heavy equip load, if you're like hold too many items at once, you have heavy armor or whatever, and you don't have enough endurance, then when you roll, you're gonna have a heavy roll and it's a lot harder to dodge um, as opposed to having a light load or like a medium load. You can dodge a lot faster and a lot quicker and get away from enemies quicker. So just keep that in mind, keep track of that. That's something I didn't really realize until like a quarter of way into the game, like 
paid attention to the equip load. And once I changed out my armor and like shield and whatnot, I'm like, whoa, this is so much easier, like dodging people. But there's plenty of things to see in this game, plenty of monsters to kill. Um, and it's just, it is a great game. If you like that fantasy genre, take a look at it. That's Elden Ring, that is my review. Sorry, it was a little bit long-winded, but hopefully uh, let me know in the comments what you think of Elden Ring, if you played it, if you've beaten it, how many times you've played through it, if you've had struggles like me in the game, uh, let me know in the comments. Once again, my name is Matt Taylor. This is my variety channel. If you love cooking and making recipes, check out my other channel, In the Kitchen with Matt. Until next time, take care everyone and happy gaming.